Hello everyone, Nadlabs here. Today I'm going to be showing how you can make a very simple wraparound effect in the Godot game engine, version 3.2.2 stable, and let's get right into it. And you can see right now, if I bring these two guys close to the edge, you can see that one of them will actually start appearing on the other side, and you can see that it's actually the reverse copy. What I mean by that is, you can see that Godot's left eye is slightly showing over here, and on the other side, Godot's right eye is showing. And for the other one, which is the one that's moving quicker, you can see that it will wrap around once it's fully left the screen, and it will come back. And if I keep doing this, yeah, the offset will become greater and greater. And you can see one extra thing. Uh, well, that's confusing. Uh, for the one that's like this, which is the one that is able to wrap around the screen by showing itself on the other side, while it's also over here, you can see that if I bring this to the corner, it will appear on all four sides. And for this one, it won't because that's not what it's designed to do. If you want to skip to the part where I make something like uh, this one, where it wraps around both sides, you got you can see that timestamp in the description. And if you want to see the part where I make it wrap around the frame once it's left the frame, if that makes sense, then there's another timestamp there for your convenience. So let's get right to it. Now you can see this scene looks pretty normal, right? There's a line 2D indicating the end of the frame, right? We have a player nice kinematic body 2D, and we have a player nice cheap kinematic body 2D. But if I zoom out, clearly tell how the illusion is achieved, and that's in player nice. And quite simply, if you take a look, we achieve the effect or the illusion just by making sure that the sprite is positioned in nine different sections, and these sections are very special. And if I zoom in over here, you can probably see how they're special. These sprites are positioned directly on the edges of the frame. So let's talk about this one. This one's positioned exactly 1024 pixels. Why 1024 pixels? It's because if we go over here into our display window and we go to our width of the window, we can see that it's exact 1024 pixels, which is exactly how far we position the second sprite, which is called right. And if I go over here to the bottom one, it's 600 pixels on the Y axis. And you can see that it, the height of the frame or the height of the window is also 600 pixels. And that's just a, a visual component. I added the bottom right, top right, top left, bottom left, because it just makes the illusion whole uh, a lot more complete. And I'll just show you what happens if I don't uh, use these. What happens is we don't get all four of them in the corner. You can see that one, two, three, and this one's missing. But if I turn on these sprites and Godot should update, you can see that the fourth one is over there, which was missing before. Now that's just half the part. The rest of it is in code. I'm going to explain the script from top to bottom because that's what I used to do. So let's get right to it. So of course we have extends kinematic body 2D because the script is on a kinematic body 2D. Uh, that's pretty explanatory. Then we have our screen size, which is just going to be a vector 2. And we have to declare this globally because we use it in more than one function. So those are all the variables we need to declare at the beginning. Then we go to our ready function. We set the screen size equal to get viewport rec dot size. And that basically gets these numbers over here these two numbers, and it gives you a vector 2. Then we go to our physics process, and we're going to say for i and get children. So what does this mean? For i and get children really means that it's going to go to player nice, and it's going to say, well, okay, I'm going to get your children. So it's going to return an array of all of these things. And then every time i increases, so first it'll start off with the sprite, then it'll go to this one, this one, this one. It, I will take on the properties, and it'll actually become this object. So I'll just show you if I print it out. So if I print I, and if I run this frame with by clicking F6, you can see that we get many times sprite, 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 collision shape, sprite, sprite, sprite. And the reason we're getting multiple of them, like a lot of them, is because it happens every frame. We need to do this every frame because we need to continuously set the rotation uh, dynamically. So And I just realized something. You actually want to make sure that the collision shape's uh, uh, rotation changes because if you're using collisions, then it would be a good idea to make sure that uh, the sprite isn't colliding in a part it shouldn't. And you want to make sure the sprite isn't going to collide with something if it's not meant to. And I can just show a quick uh, example on paint. If you give me one second. If, let's say, this is the collision shape. And if your sprite is something, if your sprite's something like this, but it's actually rotated like. I can't rotate 45 degrees. Oh, wow, okay. Um, okay, that's unexpected. Uh, and if your sprite is something, and if your sprite is rotated like so, then if this is the collision shape and you have a enemy over here or something, it'll say game over. But let's say your 
cushion shape doesn't rotate, then it won't say going over here and the player will be like, wow, the game's really buggy or something. But yeah, we want to make sure that the collision shape also rotates. So the only, the easiest and quickest way we can do this is saying for I and get children, which means get, get an array of all of these, just set the rotation of I, which is going to be every single one of these, to the global mouse position, the angle to point global position. What angle to point means, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it just means return the angle, which is created between this point and this point. And the angle is going to be returned from the from a vector one. And if you're wondering what a vector one is, if you just go to Godot and type vector one, that's what it is. But it also means, it also means, one second, it also means this. It just means a line pointing to the right. And the vector one will be returned and it will be whatever this angle is indicated by the blue curved line. And the reason we want to do this is because that's how we dynamically get the rotation. If we didn't do this, and I ran this singular scene, you can see that it doesn't respond to any rotation. And we just have this really nice uh, wraparound. Anyway, and then we have our frame checker and teleporter function. If I just right click this and it will take me over there. And the way I achieved the wraparound effect is through Godot special functions. And you can see over here we have an entire document. Just If you search help, GD script is the first one that comes up. Uh, and that and I actually use one of the functions called wrap f and the wrap f actually means wrap float. Uh, what do you mean by wrap float? It means it means wrap float value. So whatever you pass into the first place between min and max. So what does that mean? That doesn't make sense to me. Well, it means create loop like behavior or infinite services, which is what we just did. And if you still don't understand it, I'll go one step deeper. And if it means if this is our screen size, or heck, not even screen size. If this is our player, if we have our player over here and we want to wrap its position between a point A and point B, what we would say in Godot is wrap f uh, global position dot x, right? Because we're only talking about the x value here. Uh, a and then a dot global position and b dot global position. What that what will happen is when we move the player over here on the x axis and it crosses the midpoint where Godot calculates everything from it will instantly snap over here. And when I mean snap, I mean it will magically teleport. And in fact, it'll just make sense if I run the scene and show you. You can see that when we run the scene, Godot instantly snaps, and by snap, I mean teleports over to the other side. And it's like, it just, and if I leave it running like this, in fact, if I re leave it running like this, it'll feel like there's literally an infinite amount of Godots being generated. But in fact, or in reality, it's not. It's just an endless loop being generated by that wrap f. And the reason we have to break it down into components is because I learned to work with vectors in components, so I always do everything in components, plus the wrap f function only wraps floats, right? We can't really wrap the global position. And for me, it's just easier if I break down my code into components. We're just going to say global position dot x is going to be equal to the wrapped value of global position from zero to screen size dot x. And that literally means that we're going to wrap this sprite over here, this kinematic body 2D's position from zero over here to screen size dot X. That's all it means. And the same is true for Y. So that was how to make, oops, my bad. And that was how to make this very simple wraparound, which goes across to the other side. And you can see one special thing is that the, the collision shape, the one with the light blue box around it, is only active on half of it. It depends on where it is. So if your player is just camping over here on the sides, which is not a good idea, but whatever, the player actually won't get any collisions for this one. They'll only get it for this top one over here. So that's something you want to keep in mind. From personal experience, whenever I camp on the sides, I always get shot by something because I don't know what's coming over here on the left and right. Because as a player, I don't know which one has the collision shape because I don't know how the game developer does collision. And I just know that this is a very simple way to get that illusion if you're doing it for a game jam. If you want to do it for a professional game, I do not know about that. But on to the next one. So now we're going to be making the player nice cheap, or that's just how I called it, which is just a way we get Godot to wrap around by making it teleport after it's left the entire frame. And once it leaves the frame, you can see that it just goes over to the other side. And the way this is achieved is through making it teleport just when it reaches the other side. But we don't see it because the frame is a certain size, and we make sure Godot teleports when it's past the frame. And if you're wondering why I put it there, if you see this purple line, if I zoom out, maybe it's here, maybe if I zoom in, it's here, but whatever. There's like a very faint purple line over there. Maybe if I just grab, like you can see this purple line. These are the two purple lines. 
whenever Godot passes these, or if Godot passes these over here, you can see that Godot will magically teleport to its corresponding side. So if it goes past this over here, it'll end up over here and it'll continue on its merry way. Or if it goes past here, it'll end up over here and it'll just continue on its merry way. So, control C, control C. And uh, we achieve in a very similar way. In fact, it's almost the exact same, except for the fact that we don't wrap around zero and screen size. We wrap around left X, right X, top Y, bottom Y. What are these? Well, if you're looking at the top of the screen, you can probably see it already. We're just wrapping it across the sprite size dot X divided by two. Whoa, 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 where did you get sprite size? Well, sprite size actually refers to the player sprite, which is just a reference to the sprite itself over here. Player sprite dot get rec, not get rec in the comedic sense, but in the actual sense of uh, Godot functions, we get the rectangle size. We get the rectangle and then we get the size. And this line over here just returns a vector to saying this. Vector to 64 by 64 because the default Godot icon is 64 by 64. The reason we have to do this instead of vector 64 by 64 is because let's say later down the line you don't want to use a Godot sprite for your final project and you want to use your own sprites. Well, you don't have to go back and fix the code and find the bug. It will be fixed for you because we're just getting the sprite size. Now I have to warn you of one thing. Using this function is great if you don't scale up and down your sprite size. Because according to Godot, the sprite size is 64 by 64. It doesn't care what the scale is. The scale is for you to see. It doesn't care. And I'll actually just show you. If I do 2 by 2, the entire illusion breaks. You see that it like wraps around too early and I can still see a little bit of it. Although this much is tolerable. But if you're like, if the player is going really slowly, they'll see that it just teleports and that just breaks the illusion of having a nice spoon wrap around. And now we're, I'm going to go through the variables. So we have basically the same stuff, except we have four of these, which are just floats. And we're going to dynamically set these. So the left X is obviously going to be the left value, but the left value is going to be very special because you can see that we can't do zero because Godot will just magically teleport to the other side. And we don't have anything on the other side to make it seem like Godot's already there. So we have to actually go outside of the frame, which is indicated by the green line. And we have to get note of its, uh, we have to make a note of its position. And you can see it's at negative 32. Negative 32 is half the size of, oops, negative 32 is half the size of the Godot sprite. And that's what we have to get it at. So negative sprite size dot X divided by two will get us negative 32. Same thing for the top Y, which is, my bad, which is up here. Right, negative 32. And if we're trying to make Godot teleport across when it reaches the right side of the frame, we just have to do the screen size, which is 1024 plus 32, which gets you to about 1056. Now, you might be wondering, why don't we just say 1056? It's because I don't know if you're going to change your, or you don't know, actually, you don't know if you're going to be changing your screen size down the line, or if you change your sprite down the line. It's kind of impossible to predict what you're going to do in the future. So you might as well just save your future self some work and make everything or most things dynamically set. So because we set these values at the beginning, we're going to go over here to our wall checker and teleporter, and we're going to say the exact same thing. But instead of saying zero to screen size dot X, we're going to say left X to right X. And we're going to say top Y to bottom Y. And yeah, that concludes the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And the reason this purple line is here, because I wanted to show what happens you can see immediately as soon as it crosses the frame if we assume this purple line to be the end of the frame which is kind of not it's kind of not but let's say it is as soon as it crosses the edge of the frame you can see it's no longer the real godot it's the fake one the imposter but this is the real one over here and you can see when this one uh, crosses the line it actually teleports to the other side and yeah that's all this tutorial is about if you enjoyed this have an amazing day and that's it Okay.